Hey guys, this is Brian with Inspiring How You See That. We're the channel that talks about all different kinds of music and entertainment and interviews some of your favorite artists. Today I have a very special guest. I have Neil Middleton from Royal Bliss. And Neil, thank you so much for spending this time with us. You're welcome, brother. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And we're here in Pittsburgh. We're actually at Jurgles tonight. Yeah. And so is this awesome. your first time in Pittsburgh? Or? Yeah, we've never played Pittsburgh. We've eaten somewhere here. What's like you have a famous sandwich shop or something? Oh yeah, uh, Primanis. Primanis. Primanis yeah, Brothers, yeah, yeah. 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 That was we drove through here just to stop and eat there. <laughs> that was years ago, but yeah, we've never played in the Pittsburgh area. This nice. place is killer, man. This is like an old it's like a barn, rock yeah. barn. It's it's phenomenal. We're it's stoked. very cool. I mean, you got the bar, the venue, everything all together and it's yeah, nice. It's a sold out show tonight, so I'm I'm excited. Absolutely. Now, since you're in Pittsburgh, going to be here at night, you got to go downtown and check it out at night. You got to see the incline. That's what's beautiful. Heard. But it's like we're in this tour bus, <laughs> and I don't know that driving this tour bus around downtown Pittsburgh is going to be great. That may not be but fun. How far is it? What, like 15 minutes away? Yeah, you're about 15 minutes from downtown Pittsburgh here. Uber. But I, I will, t that's probably the better way to go, because driving in Pittsburgh can be kind of a pain. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I've heard. I've heard. <laughs> I don't even remember. I think we I, I we fired a bus driver, so I'm driving our tour bus right now, and so it probably wouldn't be a good idea for me to drive this thing down there. <laughs> exactly. Especially after partying. <laughs> Now, you guys are actually you're playing with Fozzie tonight. Yeah, yeah. And so, how long have you... Is this the first stop you've done with them? Or No, no. This is... Uh, we've been out for a couple weeks now. Uh, three weeks with Fozzie playing shows. And we did a small run last year um, before things got too crazy. And uh, so, I, I don't, we've done probably 15 shows with Fozzie. And it's been really, really cool. Nice. We're right in the middle of the tour right now. We wrap it up October 9th at Earth Day Birthday down in Orlando with them. So. Oh, okay. Very cool. It's our final show. And then you get the whole... You guys are from Utah, correct? Yeah, Salt Lake City. Okay. Nice. So then after that, we get to drive 2,400 miles back home. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. <laughs> it's that glorious life, right? Yeah. Rock and roll, right? <laughs> oh. It's, it's amazing. You're so lucky. I am. I am for that, you know, hour I get to be on stage. You're the best <laughs> in the entire world. Absolutely. But then when you're in a traveling hallway with seven dudes that like to eat pizza and Mexican food, it's not all it's not all glory. It's kind of rough. But thank you for having me on the bus. But I should mention we're on their tour bus, and it's yeah, yeah. very gracious of you guys. You're very welcome. Getting a little mood lighting there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <man. laughs> This bus has a mind of its own, but nothing's happening, bro. We're yeah, no, no, all in the up and up here. <laughs> yeah, that happens late at night. So, so one of the things, um, you know, lo looking at your music, you guys have a lot of fun with your music. You got, I'm thinking of, you know, your rendition of All For Me Grog. Oh, yeah, you yeah. got a lot of those drinking, those fun songs. Is that just kind of your guys' personality coming out in your music? Yeah, I think so. You know, when we started out, you know, we had almost a... Had a little bit of a reggae rock vibe to us, and then okay, because we were all like partying whenever you know high school is when we started, and we kind of had that vibe of girls and drugs and rock and roll and drinking and everything else, and and uh, over time, you know, kind of life happened. Sure, but the party aspect of Royal Bliss didn't ever go away, but life kind of gave us a harder edge because sure. there's a lot more serious content to talk about you know like with family and yeah and life and getting screwed over by the record industry and other things that we've dealt with and and so a lot of a harder edge came out where it wasn't all about parting but every album almost has that song about like just a good time because we want to have that positive energy i mean our job is to get in there and make sure everybody has fun they sure. don't think about anything outside that venue at that moment we bring everybody together having a good time it's always in a bar or a live music venue and drinks are you know involved pretty much 100 percent of the time and uh you know it's just uh so the party vibe has just been a part of royal bliss since day one nice now you also like you mentioned you have kind of a serious side too and oh, you yeah. know i'm thinking of crazy the video for crazy that was crazy for lack of a better yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it kind of walked me through because it and if i'm reading it, it was almost like a kind of a Hopefully not too near future yeah. dystopian, you know, kind, kind of, of America. Exactly. So, um, yeah, and that's kind of the vibe we went to, where you know, with the whole concept of being, it was our friend Chris Lee that kind of came up with it, and uh, he was just like, so it's like the world is ending, and you guys are the last band on the planet, <laughs> and you have to still get out there and unite the people with music, and you know, which is kind of what I feel like today is, sure, even, where. You know, it, it's so crazy with the pandemic and everything going on, but I think people need that connection, hopefully yep. in a safe manner, but people need that connection with other people, not just on social media where all you see are the differences and there's exactly. such a focus on the negative connotations of yep. people's belief. And 
And so when you look out into a crowd and everybody's smiling and singing along and they're all there together and they're all strangers, um, I mean, there's a power about it. And yep. there's this positive energy that I think is beneficial, both mentally and physically. Yep. And, uh, and so that, that particular song is, you know, it's kind of, hopefully it's not like you're saying, like predicting the future. <laughs> but it was cool and kind of, not ironic, but symbolism of in the hangar, the, the hangar that we were shooting in mm -hmm. is actually the hangar that housed the Enola Gay, where they did all the trailing okay. training for the Enola Gay. So we kind of tied everything in, which is out there in Utah. We tied everything into this post-apocalyptic vibe. And I mean, the song is mainly about missing my family and missing sure. the ones you love. And, and it's one of those songs that have really reached a, a, a broad variety of people for different reasons, you know, whether it's love and marriage and, and family or missing someone that you love that is no longer with us. Like it's been played at funerals, it's been played at weddings. Sure, sure it's been played at conception. Um, things like that where and it's amazing that a song like that that can mean so much to people in different right. ways and that's like with our lyrics and everything it's like i give my lyrics to whoever and our songs to whoever you take sure. you take the music and you make it yours if, if you can relate it to something in your life or you that tells a story about you then it's all yours and that's what it means it doesn't matter what it meant to me when i wrote it, it matters what it means to you but what sure. it means to me it, it'll always mean that to me but whenever people connect it in, to their own life and make it a part of their story it's amazing absolutely and you bring up a good point about the power of music and you know especially now like you said it, it, there's a lot of negativity it feels like everybody's at each other's throat yeah and it's like you get together at a show all of that goes away yeah and it's like we're all here and there's almost a family atmosphere and if we could take that and expand it out to everything <laughs> yeah man it'd be so much better yeah and it sucks you know like with the uh, with everything that's going on right now you know, and, and even you know when we're all having a good time there's still that there's that that tension that was never there before right of like oh i hope like the people that are still nervous about going out worried about being responsible you know and, yep. and then there's the people that just don't care and you know believe it's all a hoax or whatever and they're just they're you know doing their thing mm -hmm. but there's still you can feel that little vibe at, at moments where it's just there's that tension that wasn't yeah. there before yeah and so it's like what i try to do is break that tension when i'm on stage and get those smiles and get people in and and hope that everybody's safe i mean that's it's it's a double-edged sword sure but you, you know. want to be safe but you also want to live yeah exactly and i don't want to get any of our fans sick i don't want anybody to get sick and and i don't want anybody to die of course and it would be absolutely horrible um and we haven't heard of anybody getting sick at a royal bliss show which is good um or and especially dying sure but you know i have people come up to me crying at some of these shows just like thank you so much for yeah. playing it feels so good to be we back need it. out yeah yeah and we see how much it means to these people and and uh so it's that thing where you know there's times when i'm like i hope i'm doing the right thing but then i have people like that where it's like i'll get messages the next day i've had the best morning i've had in over a year and a half thanks, sure thanks for the live music and it's like okay well good because I, I i mean whenever you're just dwelling on the negativity and the fear that's going on right yep. now i mean that makes you unhealthy so absolutely got to break that break <laughs> that cycle and, and get people smiling absolutely as great as it is for us fans to get back out it's got to be even more so for you guys especially a band like you i mean you guys average 150 170 shows a year oh yeah so how did you make it through the past year and a half when you couldn't do that it was interesting you know at first it was a shock to the system like what are we going to do we had to cancel i think it was like 140 150 some odd shows and it was just like panic mode and we own a bar and live music venue in salt lake as well called the royal okay and so it was like the two industries that we're a part of just shut down yeah. completely and like i have no life right now. yeah it was just like <laughs> oh man what like freaking out but then you know like royal this always does we just figure it out you yeah know? it's like we don't roll over and die it's just like we we got to figure out how to make this work what can we do live streaming like we instantly went to live streaming and bought up a a setup to do live feeds from our band room and a rehearsal space and and uh, just got creative and we survived through it which was awesome and we were able to help our club survive survive as well played there like five times a month for 20 percent capacity you know with everybody in seats 10 feet away and Ain't all this better other than stuff. nobody <laughs> but better than nobody exactly i mean it was tough but uh it was actually kind of nice to be home because we had been on tour for like 20 years and yeah and i got two kids at home and the rest of the guys some of the guys have kids and and to be home and like be able to go camping and fishing sure. and, and do stuff around the house and like 
be able to put on clean underwear every day and <laughs> shower fresh if air. I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, you know, these little things you take for granted. Sure. And, and uh, I got into like an actual routine and I had never had a routine in my life. Like when they were on tour, you just don't know what the next day is going to bring. It's just right. kind of up in the air and you just figure it out as you go. So the whole routine thing is really hard to come up with. So like being, getting back on the road, it was, it's been a little tough, like for everybody, you know, like I said, we're in a traveling hallway, you know, you can see the end of it and you see everybody, we got nine bunks in here and six dudes right now, sometimes seven and, uh, and it gets a little tight. So it's sure. like, it's, we're still kind of figuring out, like getting used to being on the road and coming up with the road routine, which is the lack of routine. Right. And you'll have your wife and your kids and yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, you miss your family so much more. And my kids really miss me a lot more because dad actually got to be home. And sure. they realize they like me. And uh, <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah, which is a good thing. <laughs> but, you know, my youngest is like, he's 10. And, you know, he told me before I left, he's like, I wish COVID would come back so you don't have to leave. And I'm like, oh, God. Oh, man. That's a rough one, son. To wish a pandemic would come back heavy sure. and make it so dad didn't leave. I mean, no, it hurts, man. Sure. It's tough. But, you know, this is what dad does to pay the bills and make a living. And I've been doing a long time and, and uh, I want to show them that they can follow their dreams and right. continue to do what they love no matter what, even though it's hard as hell sometimes. But And the joy that it brings other people. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I feel like we make a difference with, with our music. And, mm -hmm. You know, we have fans tell us all the time that songs mean certain things to them. And, and you know, it either got them off drugs or saved their marriage or prevented them com from com committing suicide, which we've had multiple times. Wow. And that's the most powerful one where sure. it's like I was ready to pull the trigger or ready to do this or do that. And my friend introduced me to your music or your song came on and I I didn't do it. And like cry, like bust down crying and give me a hug and just say thank you. And it's like any doubt that I have of maybe I didn't choose the right path in life just yep. kind of goes away at that point because I mean that question can come up quite a bit whenever you're in the oh, grind sure. of the entertainment industry it's not easy so it's like uh, those moments are the one things that kind of make you feel justified in the decisions you made in life sure now going back to your music specifically I mean you guys have a really cool mix of, of what I consider rock and folk oh cool so what are some of the influences because yeah, I, I was showing my dad some of your videos He's like, man, I wish I'd have got a ticket. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, I mean, we're really diverse, uh, and the four of us right now are even more diverse, I think, than we've ever been. You know, me, Taylor, and Jake have been together for 24 years. Mm -hmm. Brian's been with us for like four now, and, uh, you know, I think the only band that we all kind of agree on is Led Zeppelin. Okay. But then we all have very vast, uh, you know, favorites or... or you know, influences as far as music goes. We all have bands that we all like together, you know, the you know, Johnny Cash and Pink Floyd, and we all, a few of us grew up on 311 even, so there's like, sure. it's very eclectic. I love The Head and the Heart is one of my favorite bands, and that's kind of a folky band. And okay. I like songs that tell stories, so I'm all, I'm, I'm all about vocals and songs that tell stories, a yeah. really good melody. Um, but yeah, it's like, and we don't write with an intention, we write like just what is coming out of us at the moment. Okay. Uh, like I write my lyrics and melody come, I, the band will start jamming, whatever they need to get out of their head. If it's an aggressive song, if it's a happy song, if it's a mellow song, then I just vibe off of that. And, and sometimes I'll write the music too. And of something that just pops into my head that I either need to get out or I want to get out. Sure. And, uh, and it doesn't matter if it's folky or country or, metal or rock or whatever you want to classify it as it's all royal bliss at the end of the day there you go that's that's how we are I mean, people ask me what kind of music do you like i'm like good yeah in the same <laughs> it's, way it's like if it's good i like it if it's good i can get down to it <laughs> if it has, tells a story and sometimes it doesn't need to tell a story if it's catchy and, and or makes you feel something yeah it makes you feel something yep. it puts you in a good mood or makes you run a little bit farther you know, something like that. even if it takes you off it's like well still maybe yeah, feels yeah like. maybe i need to get angry at that moment <laughs> exactly nice now neil before we go if you had a word of advice for a young person who's thinking i want to be in a band whether it's something to look out for or something to strive for what would oh, be some God. advice you'd give them we don't have long enough my friend um <laughs> it's a ever-changing industry i will say that, that every every day it changes 
um, learn how to write a good song and write honestly play from the heart don't try to be anybody else though many people will try to make you be somebody else mm -hmm. but the best way to be original is to be yourself um, and learn business because it's at the end of the day what you're doing if you want to become a band and do it for a living you got to function like a small company you got to mm -hmm. function like a small business form an LLC get a relationship with a bank uh, have multiple different accounts that are associated your different albums and different divisions of your company and and learn marketing learn digital graphics learn as many things as you can possibly learn that you can do within your band so each person in the band has a function beyond just playing their instrument um, and be very patient and make sure that you love whether it's 20 minutes or 90 minutes or three hours but being on that stage make sure you love that more than pretty much anything because it's such a hard life uh, that if your moments on stage aren't the most glorious thing that you've ever felt in your life then it probably isn't what you should be doing gotcha so uh, it, there's a lot more to it than just playing music <laughs> see there you go so be prepared be prepared for the unprepared <laughs> yeah 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 be prepared for everything learn how to drive buses <laughs> in downtown Pittsburgh <laughs> yeah because it'll save you $1,300 a week which you know I mean, I drove this bus through downtown Baltimore last night. Oh yeah. And then I had to, I was we were in Huntsburg or uh, uh, not Huntsburg. What's the town up the road from here? Pennsylvania, the capital of Pennsylvania. Oh Harrisburg. Harrisburg. Yep. Not Huntsburg. I knew there was a bird involved. <laughs> Harrisburg. I had to parallel park this thing on a tiny little cobblestone road. But those are the things you never thought you'd be doing you know i just thought i'd be singing it and have a beach house by now in malibu <laughs> or something with a ferrari someday instead i'm driving everybody around <laughs> on this tour bus and emptying the garbage and dumping the pisser <laughs> rock and roll <laughs> exactly where can fans follow you guys at? uh royalbliss.com um i mean on facebook it's royal bliss on instagram royal bliss band um, you just look up Royal Bliss and you'll find us everywhere. YouTube Royal, Bli Royal Bliss something on YouTube. <laughs> There's a page. <laughs> should know better. Uh, if you go to RoyalBliss.com, it'll have absolutely everything. Right now, if you go on and buy merchandise, you have a chance to win a 2014 Harley Davidson Ultra Glide that we Ooh. customized and built ourselves. Nice. That is absolutely gorgeous called Black Rhino. Nice. So go online and check it out. And, and uh, Maybe pick up some merch or a t-shirt or a CD and win a brand new, not new, but close enough, 2014. New to you. Yeah, new to you. Awesome. And you'll thank you so much. Oh, we really you appreciate having, it. You know, I appreciate it. And before we go, is there anything else you'd like to say to fans? Uh, just support the local bands out there. Support your uh, bands that are just down the street that need that, uh, need that support. Because you never know um, what they'll become. And sometimes... They just need to play music to uh, ease their brains. If I didn't play music, I don't know if I'd still be alive. So some of these some of these young kids out there, they need to play music. They need to be out in front of a crowd. So if you can go support them over a DJ, or over karaoke night, or over something like that, then just show up, clap, buy their T-shirt, and tell them they're doing a good job. Unless they're not, then don't support them and tell them to go get a real job. <laughs> In a nice way. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again, Neil. And, and as always, guys, thank you so much. Make sure you check them out. These guys are incredible. Oh, yeah, You're going to cool. love their music. I'm pumped to finally see you guys live. Oh, yeah. This will be my first time. So, Well, welcome to Royal Bliss. Appreciate friend. that. Thank oh, yeah. you. And as always, thank you for spending this time with us. We love you guys. God bless. And rock on. Rock on.